How's it going guys, I'm Josh, and today I'm gonna to let you in on a little secret about taking amazing landscape photos. And no, this is not clickbait that strings you along. This is a video about filters, particularly this graduated neutral density filter. So first of all, what are these things here? So this right here is a 10 stop neutral density filter. And basically what this does is you screw it onto your camera lens and you can then, it makes it so, so much darker, that you can shoot a long exposure photo during the day. And it's just a super dark, beautiful thing that makes you, you can smooth out your water, see the clouds dragging. And I have a whole video about this neutral density filter. Link to that right over here. What I've never talked about before is this graduated ND filter, which is super, super cool. So this right here is a format high tech four stop neutral density filter. So what does this do? If you've ever shot a landscape photo with the sky in it, then you've probably come to the realization that you either have to have your sky as too bright, your foreground as too dark, or take a crazy HDR, which is a lot of work to do. It gets messy and I don't like the style of HDRs too much. I would much rather solve that problem with a proper filter, AKA the reason why my friends say I take photos like a dad. Filters are very dad photo-esque, but they're amazing because they're just technically precise and they're gonna get you those six shots. So today's example is a photo I shot in Mount Rainier National Park last week and it's of this beautiful Mount Rainier, amazing mountain, plus a nice little S-curve, almost an S-curve, of the road and trees in the foreground. You've got a lot of stuff going on. So without this filter, you have a big issue because you have to choose between what's gonna be properly exposed, the very bright mountain and sky, or the much darker foreground. With this filter, you then screw it around so that the darker part of the photo is then just as light as the lighter part, and it's one properly exposed image. Now at this point, you've heard my sales pitch on filters and you're either super into them and ready to hear how to buy the right filter for you, or you're totally over it and you've clicked away, in which case, good riddance. So for those of you who are interested in filters, basic lay of the land, there are two types of filters. There are the screw-on filters, which actually attach to your lens, and they tend to be circular like this, and then there are the square filters that actually have to clip on with special mounting systems, and they're actually just like a sheet of glass that you then put over your lens. And there's a couple merits to both, so the reason why I like these is because they're a little bit more durable, they're super simple, you just screw them right on, and they're lighter weight and less stuff to mess with. It can be a bit of a whole operation using the square filters. These you just screw right on and you're good to go. Now the two reasons why people don't like these screw on filters, one is because they are meant for a specific size of lens. So this one is a 77 millimeter because two of my main lenses are that. Now if you want to use this on all of your lenses, you'll notice some of your lenses have a different size barrel. So this is a 24 to 105 millimeter F4 lens and the barrel on this is 77 millimeters. Now this is a 200 millimeter telephoto and you can just look right around here and it should say, this is a 72 millimeter barrel. So basically the filters that I have for these 77s will not fit on this unless I use an adapter. So you can get really cheap adapters. So the trick with these screw on filters is that you buy them for your biggest size lens barrel and then you can buy converters to put them on your smaller lenses like this one. You don't do the opposite way around buying them small and converting them to bigger because then you'll see the edges of the filter. Another warning here is you might get a lens in the future that has a bigger barrel than any lens you've had before, in which case all of your circular filters will be rendered obsolete. So you gotta be really careful with that and know what kind of lenses you might have soon or know that you wanna just commit to using it on a specific type of lens. And the second reason why people choose not to get these sometimes is because see how this line is right around the center of the frame and this will always now be in the center of the frame in all of your images. So you're gonna actually have to change your composition to make sure that this line aligns with where you want the darkness and the lightness to end and begin. Versus if you use a square filter, you can actually shift that filter around to have it in any part of your frame, which is definitely a major plus because having to be forced to compose in a certain way because of this little filter is a little bit frustrating. And I've definitely been there and with proper zooming and getting a little bit lower or a little bit higher, you can definitely solve that problem. See right here, it's too high and it's messing with the sky. Right here, it's too low and it's messing with everything that's not the grass. So anyway, 
You have it nicely lit right here. And for me, because I do a lot of hiking and outdoor stuff, I just want to have as light equipment as possible and something that's pretty durable. So for me, these are 100% the move, but for some people, you might be more of a square filter kind of man or woman. Also, quick side note, I'll put links to all three of my filters down below in the description, as well as a link to my site where you can see all of the camera gear I have and reviews on it. And now I want to talk about the numbers behind all these ND filter names because it can get a little bit confusing. So ND filters work in stops. So the more stops that an ND filter is, the darker it's going to be. And a stop is the same equivalent as a stop on your camera. So a 10 stop neutral density filter is making your photo 10 stops darker. So you can then use a shutter speed 10 stops slower to have the same exact photo that you would without the ND filter. And these stops then correlate with the number for the ND filter, and sometimes you'll only see this second number. So a 10 stop is an ND 3.0. Then a five stops is half of that, it's ND 1.5. A four stop ND filter is a 1.2. So you might only see those smaller numbers. So now that we understand the numbers, I wanna go into what kind of ND filters you wanna buy. So I have a 10 stop neutral density because 10 is really, really dark and it can just handle a photo, making it so much easier to get long exposures during the daytime. However, 10 is almost obnoxiously dark at times. So if I wanna shoot during high noon and it's super bright outside, it's perfect because it gives me a lot of flexibility. But when it gets really, really dark, sometimes it's like, this is just too long. I don't need a four minute shutter speed. Now for this reason, they make ND filters like the ND 1.2, which is just four stops. And that is what this graduated neutral density filter is. Now for the graduated neutral density filter, I have the 1.2 or the four stop one. And the reason why I went for this is because I do a lot of landscape photography. And after doing a bunch of research, I learned that typically the difference between the overexposed sunset or sky and the underexposed foreground is about four stops. And the goal here is just to neutralize both sides so they're both properly exposed. And some people will say you want a 1.2, some people will say a one, some will say a 1.5, but I've found that this is really, really solid for that. And normally both sides are properly lit the way I want them to be after using this filter. And this is a Firecrest filter and the other two, I have a polarizer filter and this 10 stop ND and these are both made by B&W because I really, really like both of these brands. And after doing a bunch of research, found that these seem to be the most bang for your buck. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the pricing of filters. Filters can get pretty, pretty expensive. You can spend hundreds of dollars on individual filters, which in my opinion is really gnarly. You can also get really, really cheap filters. You can find a $30 neutral density filter, it just might not be good. And the analogy I've heard for this that helped me decide what kind of filter I wanna get is you wouldn't buy a $1,000 lens and then shoot all your photos through a smudged window pane. And that's what a lot of photographers will say about using a super cheap filter. It almost ruins the whole point in getting a nice piece of glass or nice lens. So what I recommend you do is pick a filter within your budget. If you have hundreds and hundreds of dollars to blow on one filter, it might be worth it. I chose these nice filters that range between 70 and 130 or so dollars because it's reasonable, it's definitely still expensive, but I wanted something that was gonna be pretty good um, and also not break the bank. So yeah, I'm gonna link to not just my filters, but I'll pick some cheaper alternatives for those of you that wanna save a little more money um, down below. You can definitely check out on Amazon. And I think that just about sums up my take on filters. And hopefully you learn a little bit more about the graduated neutral density filter and are ready to take your photos to the next level. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe for more photo videos. I also do skate videos and be sure to check out my Instagram link to that right over here for more of my photos and to stay up to date on all life stocking things in my life. And also you can check out my photo website where I have tons of stuff, photo tutorials, prints of my best shots and reviews on all of my camera equipment. Link to that right over here. And lastly, if you want another photo video, I reviewed Canon's 50 millimeter 1.2 lens, a crazy $1,300 lens that I didn't really like that much. So link to that right over here if you're interested. That is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you eventually.